Hi, everyone. Welcome to our talk about WebSockets and Flask in the real world. My name is Yael Green, and I'm a software engineer at Imubit. Imubit is a startup company, and we do optimization of process control using machine learning. On our agenda for today, we will talk about the usages of Socket.io and event-based communication in a production Flask application. I will present actual code examples, and in the end, you will get a link to the full GitHub project. First, a few words about Socket.io and its advantages. We will not dive into how it works and how it is used in a JavaScript framework. Next, we will talk about Python implementation of Socket.io and specifically in Flask application. Moving on to the code session, I will present a basic web application in Python with Socket.io. And after we learn the basics, I will add some complexity and show some more event-based communication across application components. Socket.io is a JavaScript library built on top of WebSockets and other technologies. It enables real-time, bidirectional, event-based communication between the browser and the server. It works on every platform, browser, or device, focusing equally on reliability and speed. As we can see in this simplified diagram, the bidirectional communication is enabled when a client runs Socket.io in the browser, and the server has also integrated the Socket.io package. In this example, a Node.js server is running the Socket.io JavaScript library. In the previous diagram, we saw a JavaScript implementation of Socket.io. Of course, in PyCon, we will learn about how to utilize the Socket.io in a Python server. Python Socket.io is a Python implementation of Socket.io real-time client and server. Flask Socket.io is a Flask implementation of Socket.io on the server side. It gives Flask application access to low latency bi-directional communication between the client and the server. In this snippet, I will demonstrate a basic usage of Socket.io using the Flask Socket.io library. As I promised, we will be seeing lots of code. So let's walk through it. First, I create a Flask instance. Next, I create a Flask Socket.io server. In the main function, the socket IO run replaces the app run standard startup, I'm sure you're all familiar with. This function encapsulates the startup of the web server. Now, in one of the API calls, we can send a message to the connected clients using the emit function. In this example, we notify all the clients about the arguments we received in the request. As we all know, Flask alone is not suitable for production and must be hosted by a real web server, thus requiring additional development and configuration to enable the usage of Socket.io. In this diagram, I present our simple basic framework. A UWS GI server is hosting a number of Flask application instances. Nginx is used as a proxy to the UWS GI server, and multiple browsers are communicating with our web application. Our goal is to send updates from any Flask app to all browsers. There could be many reasons why we would want to do this. Uh, for example, the server takes a long time to process a request from the client, and we don't want the client to wait, nor do we want the client to keep on pulling the server. Using Socket.io, we can notify the client when the server has finished processing the request. Another use case uh, could be when we need to push notifications to a large number of users, for example, in a chat application. I will walk through all the code and configurations we implemented to fulfill our goal. Going step by step, first we will start with the Flask application. Previously, we saw how to initialize a Flask instance that supports Socket.io. In this snippet, I will show more usages of Socket.io library. For our index route, I return a simple web app, a simple web page running the client side Socket.io. In this function, I send a message on the socket IO to all connected clients. And in the last function, I demonstrate the use of connection event handler. Using a decorator, this function will be called upon each socket connection. Next, we will see the UWSGI configuration. Notice the HTTP web sockets option is set to true to allow the usage of socket IO. Next, we will see the Nginx configuration. 
In this snippet, we see the socket IO configuration and specifically notice the socket IO port. Next, we will see the JavaScript browser side. This snippet is the script running on the client. I won't dive into this since it's not Python, but I wanted to present a full example. And now moving on to our demo of the basic framework. So as I mentioned in the beginning uh, of our session, uh, we will be seeing uh, actual uh, demos of live code and I will be sharing um, all the code that we have seen and will see with you in a GitHub project at the end of our session. This is uh, the GitHub project. We can see there are two folders, one for the basic framework, which we have just seen, and another one for the complex framework we will see uh, later on. So let's start diving into the code. So the basic framework is actually a full working solution. Um, it will, you can run it um, standalone or you can run it uh, using a Docker file. We will use a Docker file. And so let's go through the actual code. A lot of the code uh, we have already seen uh, so far in the snippet. So let's walk through it. We have a example app. Over here, we create the Flask application and create the socket IO application. Here we have a uh, index uh, route. Um, here we will return a response for the index page. We will render a template, template with uh, the out of the index HTML template over here. Here we uh, run the uh, client side script, a JavaScript, listening to the socket IO. And going back to the example app, over here, we have uh, this uh, API function for the API uh, routes. We will uh, send all the clients on socket IO a message. Uh, the message will contain the data we received in the request arguments, as we can see uh, over here. And in the connect function, we will notify all the clients when a client connects to the socket IO with the a message connect connected. And down here in the main function, we run our socket IO application. As I said uh, beforehand, this is a full working solution. So besides the example application and our templates, we also have all the other files we will need to run this project. So we have a Docker file. We have the Nginx configuration, including the configuration for our socket IO. We also have a supervisor D configuration running our UWSGI and a UWSGI configuration with HTTP WebSockets enabled. We also have a requirements um, file with the requirements you will need for installing uh, this project in your local environment. And finally, we have a readme explaining all about this project. Uh, what is our goal, how to run the project and how to use it. There are two ways on running the project. As I mentioned beforehand, you can run it locally with the UWSGI command line, or you could create a Docker file and run it. We will use the Docker file option. I have already created a Docker file. So all we have left is to run it. So our application uh, is up. And uh, what would, would we expect to see? So we expect to see the connected message and each connected client. And when the API call is called, we would expect to see a message on all connected clients containing the arguments of that request. Here we can see the connected message sent to uh, our connected client. And here we call the API with some arguments. And as we expect, we see the arguments on all connected clients. Now that we have learned how a basic framework works, I will present a more complex framework and explain how we enabled event-based communication for this architecture. The right side of the framework you probably recognize. 
from the previous example. In this framework, we added another server, running a few instances of another process. Our goal is to send updates from any process to all browser instances. There could be many reasons why we would want to do so. Uh, for example, our framework requires some heavy computation or network usage, and we don't want that burden on the same server running our web application. Um, another reason could be some parts of our framework require some specific hardware. We achieved this goal by adding two new components. First, we added a Redis server to transfer the communication between the new process and the web server. We also used the Redis server as a backend for our socket IO. Next, we added a new process to our UWS GI server. This process will listen to incoming messages from the Redis. Again, as in the previous example, we will walk through many code snippets and configurations to learn how we achieved our goal. First, we will see the communication between the new process and the web application. These snippets demonstrate how I sent and received messages over a Redis pub sub. The snippet on the left side demonstrates sending a message on a Redis client. First, I created a Redis client. Now the message is ready and I publish a message on the channel. The snippet on the right demonstrates receiving a message on a Redis pub sub channel. Again, I created a Redis client. I use the client pub sub to, su to subscribe to a channel. And now I am ready to listen to the channel and read incoming messages. Next, we will see the communication between all Flask instances. The communication between all Flask instances is done using UWSGI signaling. The snippet on the left side demonstrates sending the signal using UWSGI signaling. This is very simple and can be done in one line. The snippet on the right demonstrates receiving the signal using UWSGI signaling. Here, I use the UWS, UWSGI decorator to listen to a signal and call a function once it is received. Next, we will see how to communicate from any Flask app instance to all clients on socket IO using a Redis backend. In our application, we needed to enable lazy apps. Therefore, we used a Redis backend for our socket IO. I created the socket IO on Redis backend by using our Redis server as a message queue. You can see the socket IO is used the same way as in the previous examples. And last, we will see the UWS GI configuration. Notice that I added a new mule process. This process is used to listen to messages received on the Redis channel, as I explained previously. Notice the new HTTP listener listening on socket IO port. And now that we went through uh, all the code and snippets and configurations, we can see how it works in action. Now we will see the demo for our complex framework example. Again, as in the previous example, all the code can be found in our uh, GitHub uh, repository, this time under complex uh, frameworks. And we will walk through the example and uh, see how it works. So we will start with this function. This function publish event is decorated with a timer. Timer is a UWS GI decorator. And what it does is uh, calls uh, this function every X number of seconds on a new process. So over here, what we see is a uh, new process on a different server, which runs every few seconds and sends a message on a pub sub client on a Redis client. What we see here is the new process sending a message. Now let's see how this message is sent. This is the pub sub client. The client is a uh, Redis using a Redis host, Redis host and port. Um, here we call the send event fired message, which sends a message on this channel. In the conf configured in the configuration. And when we send a message, we use the publish or the X add according to the Redis version we have. Next, we will see how this message is received on the UWS GI. What we do is we run a message mule. This message mule listens 
two messages coming on the same channel configured in our uh, config file. And when a message is received, it will send a signal using UWS GI signal indicating a message was received and will run a local task, which will print, it will output that the message was received and it will uh, write which arguments it was received with. Now let's see uh, who listens, who gets this signal and how it's done. Again, going back to our example application, each Flask application, each instance, will listen to this signal using the same uh, signal defined in the config. Uh, we do this using this signal um, decorator. This is UWSGI decorator. And this function will be called whenever this uh, signal is received. In this function, we uh, print to the log a message and notify all our connected clients about the message that we have received. Again, just as in our previous example, we have a index route, which renders a template called uh, index HTML. And in this uh, template, we have the uh, client side. This code listens to the socket IO. And by this, we completed um, the path of our data from the uh, new process on a different server and all the way to all connected clients. Uh, here we also have a onConnected function, which will notify a connected message whenever a client is uh, received. Also, uh, we have a socket IO, uh, some socket IO uh, code. This is uh, the way we init our socket using Redis as a message queue. And going back to the rest of uh, to um, the rest of our project. As I said beforehand, our project is a full working solution. So we have um, everything you need uh, for running it, uh, running the full solution. We have a configuration file. We have a uh, Docker file for creating your application, uh, Docker file for creating your application Docker, a Docker Compose with two services, Flask application and Redis service. We also have an Nginx configuration with the socket IO configuration. We have a supervisor D file with the UWSGI uh, command. We have the UWSGI uh, configuration. Notice the extra uh, yield process. The HTTP web sockets is turned to true. Um, and of course, the new mule process along with the main uh, uh, model of our application. We also have a requirements uh, file, so you could run it locally and install anything needed. And of course, we have our uh, readme uh, file with all the instructions you need on how to uh, run this example and how to use it. In the previous example, we uh, used uh, Docker. We ran a uh, Docker image. And this time we will run uh, locally using the UWSGI uh, command. So we started our server. As we can see, our server is up. What do we expect to see? So going back to our example app, we have a uh, timer function. This is a, a process running every uh, five seconds and sending a message on a pub sub client. The pub sub client um, uh, receives, this is uh, the message sent, and the message is received on our message mule. Once a message is received, uh, again, we signal using UWSGI, and we want to see um, the message outputted into the log. This UWSGI signal is received with every application. It's written to, um, uh, it's outputted to the log and sent on a socket IO to all browsers. Um, so as we can already see, we can see all, all, the, um, all the logs uh, being outputted. This happens every uh, five seconds and four times for uh, our four instances of Flask. And if we open up um, a client, we can see first the connected message 
And after a few seconds, we see uh, the message was received from our new process all the way to the browser. So that completes our uh, demo. And uh, as I promised, moving on, uh, the full example project, here's the link to the GitHub. You are more than welcome um, uh, opening the link and, and uh, looking at all the um, different examples and uh, the instructions and running it for yourself. This is always the best way to learn. And uh, just uh, uh, before we move on to the question, I just wanted to mention that we are hiring. Uh, so if you're interested, um, please reach out. Um, and last questions. Anyone want to ask anything? 